This is a swing arm from a Honda something or another, and the chain guide thingamajiggy thingy, whatever it is, seems to have broken off. Upon further inspection, it appears that the robot ran just a bit outside. Actually, for the most part, I mean, it just straight up missed. <laughs> but either way, no big deal to fix this one up, but we do have a couple things that we need to pay attention to, like these welds themselves. Now, most people want to just slap some new weld over the existing welds, but if you did that in this case, you'd basically be like trying to weld it back to a sponge. So both of these welds have to go. However, we can't just whack these down and expect them to line up perfectly where they were before, so we'll knock them out one at a time, starting with the outside. Now, just a side note here, I had to work in my other shop because we had a class going on, and the grinders and such would be drowning out the instruction, so the lighting in the third shop is kind of terrible at best, so apologies if you can't see it very well on your device. But either way, the flap disc knocked down the majority of the weld and some of the surrounding anodizing, which had to go. Now, once it was flat, the 80 grit DA sander knocks down the grinding marks and more anodizing. It also gives us a nice blend. Now, in order to restore the finish, I'm using a flap weld that is a combination sandpaper and medium prep pad. Now, one might argue that this, this step here is just kind of a pointless step, right? Why would you blend and put grain back in the metal and all the rest of that stuff when the thing is just an old beat up swing arm that's going to go out and get beat up again? Well, I mean, you kind of have a leg to stand on there, but attention to detail, like these little things just like this are what make your work stand out. And it certainly doesn't hurt to do it. So a little high speed action on the drill and we're ready to go. So onto the chain thingy, majiggy, whatever this is called anyway, it is anodized just the same as the swing arm is. So that has to go. And then whatever little tiny bit of weld that we have on here, that also has to go. So we need to get it back to a bright finish in order for the weld to take and to leave the ultimate strength on here. So this is very, very light work just done by hand. I'm really doing more like a sweeping action just to remove that top coat of that anodizing. Now, if you don't get it out of there, you're going to see some junk start to float up inside of your weld, or it's almost like an impenetrable peel coat or something like that. I mean, you got to sit there and blast the crap out of it just to get rid of the anodizing. So try to get as much of it off of there as you can when you're using the flap disc. Now, I'm not going to remove the weld from the back side just yet, and there's very, very good reason why. When a weld breaks off, it usually fractures, which means you can pretty much put it back together in a mechanical lock, just like a natural position memory. This allows me pretty much to get the tab exactly where it needs to go so I can weld it back in. Now, I'm not going to bore you with a whole bunch of this, but we'll just tell you flat out, preheat is going to do two things here. One, it's going to get any kind of impurities or junk off of the surface. And two, it's going to make it easier to weld that tab on because that base swing arm is thicker and there's more surface area than there is on the tab. So that should help your weld pool develop just a little bit quicker and a lot easier. Now, into the weld shop we go. Now, I didn't get a whole lot of fantastic shots with this. Again, we had a class going on, and I had to jump in on a machine when there was kind of a little bit of a break. So, you know, this is the best you're going to get. But I'll tell you flat out, there's a point in here where I'm totally going to screw up. And uh, it's just a little bit of a blip, a little tip and dip. So make sure you tell your friends how bad of a welder I am. Because, well, I mean, it's going to generate views. Here we go. Coming up. Boom. Right there. So... Yeah, even sometimes it still happens, but for the most part, this is nice and clean, and it's pretty straightforward. Just blast the bejesus out of it and fill it up with, uh, with some wire. You can see here at the end, there's a little bit of that anodizing just left on that weld pool as I finished and went right over it. So, you know, either way. With that side on and cooled down, I went back to the third shop and kind of reset here. Unfortunately, I forgot to lock my focus in, but I'm using a cutoff wheel to cut the old weld out down into the groove. And then I use the flap disc just the same as before to knock down the remainder of that weld. It's literally just the same as I did before. But in this instance, I actually used the cutoff wheel to actually get down into that groove and kick off some of that anodizing and flatten some of it back out again. And once again, just like before, we hit it with the DA, make sure it gets nice and blended, get rid of some of those marks in there. And actually the edge of the sandpaper gets down in there nicely. And then once again with the flap drum, just a nice smooth grain, get rid of most of that anodizing and we're pretty much set. Now, while I had it here, since I didn't want to go in and kick a student off their machine again, or whatever the case is, I did like a practice run to see where I'd be positioned on it. And it turns out I had to be standing. Now, once again, can't keep a student off of their machine too long, so um, I didn't get a chance to get a really fancy arc shot or anything else like that. Just stand up and blast this thing right in the middle of a break. A couple of times it did give me some hassle because on the edges I forgot to clean up the anodizing, so it didn't come out looking all that fantastic. I did have to sit there and blast and try to blend it a little bit, but nevertheless, it's going to hold. And of course, you see the final reveal here with my little blip in there. 
uh, the edges with the anodizing and everything else like that. You know, it doesn't look as clean as I would like it, of course. And I'm not going to lie, I haven't welded in nearly five months. So, uh, you know, it doesn't look as good as I want it to. But either way, it's a lot stronger than it was before, obviously. And, uh, you know, it's definitely not going anywhere. Now, this total repair was just a little bit over 20 minutes. So I charged the customer 40 bucks. It really is a quick and easy weld repair. And, of course, as always, I appreciate you guys watching.